So, I was playing to Fontaine, right? Excited to discover all the new lore I could get my hands on, as I do. And while exploring, I found a volume of the history of the decline and fall of Rimuya. Obviously, I was intrigued and went in the archives to read it. Next thing I know, I've gone down yet another lore rabbit hole. So, here I am, documenting what I found from reading text in this game and making a video about it. Because let's be honest, who even has time to read lore and artifacts, items, and books in this game, right? Well, me, apparently. Hello, hello, my name's Chia, and today I'm here to explain and recap the City of Rimuria's lore. I will be going over the contents of the books, as well as some of the Golden Troop artifacts descriptions, since they're relevant to this topic. And with that aside, let us begin! During the first era, which was likely the primordial one's era, it is said that people were self-supporting in their virtue. They didn't need laws or authorities. Celestia, the heavenly city, had envoys who roamed Earth alongside the people. This was a peaceful and prosperous time. Until the people started getting tired of this tranquil eternity. They started rebelling against what was taught to them by the oracles, wishing for freedom from their fates. They wanted something the divine never promised them. Obviously disapproving of this behavior, Celestia sent gigantic waves to destroy the people's cities. A hundred days of rain came afterwards. It drowned all sin and irrigation. And just like that, the early people were brought to an end. Now, when the tides finally calmed down and the land was apparent again, the survivors of the first era and new lives lived without civilization for a while. They lacked all previous knowledge and wisdom, leaving them to start from zero. Time went on from here, Fontaine still had not gained a new civilization. They were kinda behind, I'm not gonna lie. Just to situate us in time, by now, Gudabad, the city of brass in Sumeru, had already arisen and seen its downfall, and still no sign of a civilization forming in Fontaine's lands. This changed when the great king Remus descended upon Meropis to spread his knowledge on things such as farming as well as building cities and temples, although the most important teaching of his was music and art. Indeed, he believed this to be what differentiated humans from other life forms, therefore making them master of all things. Remus began conquering other islands and even got the dragon beneath the abyssal depths submitted to his authority. Everything was going well, this was the best time since Celestia kind of screwed everyone over, as they always do. <clears throat> Anyways, things were looking promising for the future of Remuria, for now at least. The city of Remuria had now entered its golden age. For this part, I will start by reading out some of the descriptions in the book because they pretty much helped to get the feel of just how glamorous the city was for its time. As you sailed past the ocean pillars along the royal fairway to the giant port playing host to Fortuna the Imperial ship, you would have first seen a lofty tower. The Tower of Remoria was not built to receive heavenly oracles, but to guide ships traveling between islands in the high waters. It is said that the tower stood at the border of reality and dreams. Even if sailors were to be lured into slumber by sirens, they could follow the sound of the bell to break through the mist and find their way to Remoria. Continuing along the royal fairway leading to Machimos, where the prey for morning warriors lived, the grand temples and arenas were built with giant carved rocks to commemorate the city's glory and victory. The solid and towering walls are decorated with glaze and gold, bronze and marble statues arrayed the land, and gold, spices, and specialties from the world piled up in the markets. Traveling to Machimos, you would arrive at the Capitolium, the center of Rimuria, overflowing with delightful aromas and beautiful melodies. It was a paradise for artists, where only the most outstanding intellectuals and musicians were allowed. Even amongst them, however, only a small fraction enjoyed the privilege of serving the god king. Here, all the theaters and palaces were established in shapes most harmonious, their beams and domes adorned with the most sumptuous and intricate carvings, and centered on a golden palace of tower and copper pillars. The king, resting peacefully at the heart of the palace, listened closely to every melody and every note coming from every corner of the empire. Needless to say, the city, especially the Capitolium which Remus focused the most on, was prosperous at this time, and even when discord occurred, the great king Remus would correct it, bringing back perfection to his empire symphony. It was during this time that the god king promoted four humans of great capability to high posts, sharing with them his power and authority to protect Remuria from whatever could try to shake his harmony and prosperity. These four became the Harmos. I think now's a good time to introduce a few other Remuria lore relevant characters, so let's put a pin in this and take a detour before continuing with the historical events of Remuria. When talking about the four Harmos, we don't have all of their names, but we do know the one who may as well have been the most important one of the four, Boethius. He's mostly talked about in the Golden Troop artifact set alongside Cassiodor, who we will also be mentioning a bit here. Boethius is a musician who came from an island Remus had yet to conquer. We can assume he didn't grow up living in the best conditions. Not much is known on his past, but his story tied to Remuria really starts when he meets a servant of the city, one of the conquered. The servant's name had been forgotten, but in later days he became known as Cassiodor. The two of them quickly became friends, and soon, they would head to the Capitolium, the highest city in the Golden Capital. It was there that they underwent multiple courses and trials that gained the God King Remus' approval, and therefore elevated their status. Boethius and Cassiodor's friendship has been said to have been a brotherly bond. I would like to note that some sources I've seen say Boethus was already a Harmos when he met Cassiodor, but from my understanding of the Golden Troop Artifact's Golden Song variation, he may not have been at this point in time. I'm just putting this here in case I'm being stupid. The timeline is not super clear, but it's worth mentioning that in the Golden Era's prelude, the artifact's description talks about how once Boethus saw the power of civilization in order after Remus recognized his ability, 
So I personally would guess that those events take place during or after the mentioned courses Cassiodor and him went through, but I may just be missing something. Anyhow, let's come back to where we left off. You know how I mentioned that everything was going good for the theory of Remuria? Well, not for long. The seers had prophesied Remuria's downfall, mentioning the greatest empire will face the most utter destruction, and this is Fortuna. And despite the God King feeling threatened by this, he still believed that as long as the city echoed with songs, they would escape the judgment of fate. Due to this prophecy, the God King committed a grave sin, that of sharing power reserved for the godly domain with humans. And I think we can all guess where this is going. Things started going downhill for the civilization that up to this point had pretty much seen only progress. With time, violence, arrogance, and exploitation started rising in the city. Those who remained unconcured by the God King and his people teamed up to go against Remuria. The earth collapsed all at once, the tall tower was uprooted and drowned in the waves alongside the great hall of pillars. Everything was chaos. At that moment, the golden era of the city had reached its end. The cacophony woke King Remus up. Witnessing the destruction, he summoned his most loyal guards and his best musicians out of fear. He gave them his final orders, hoping to bring back peace to the lands. Unfortunately, the harm could not be undone in one night. The Harmos and rulers ended up crushed beneath it all as well. And without the guiding golden songs, the people of Remoria were said to have turned into golems. In a moment of madness, King Remus betrayed the people. An inexorable storm, the abyss, swept over the lands. Remoria was destroyed, nothing was left of it except for rubble. Boethus laid amidst it, mumbling about Remus' betrayal, his sin. And as the book likes to finish its volumes, oceans will rise, empires will fall, and the only constant is change. Hello, if you've made it to the end of the video, I would like to give a quick thank you to you. This is my first actual video and my first time formatting lore like this despite the fact that ever since I started playing, I've been obsessed with the game's lore and story. I'd love to make more content like this, mostly for the fun of it and for the sake of documenting it for myself. I do apologize for anything I could have missed. I wrote the script when 4.0 had practically just dropped. Anyways, thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you later.